Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. On this video I'm going to go over some of the basics of recreating the aesthetics and the feel of a visual novel using Twine. So let's get started here. Although Twine already has the same functionality of most visual novel libraries and frameworks, it doesn't usually look like one. However, with some CSS and a couple of JavaScript functions, we can replicate the look and feel of a visual novel fairly easily. For, exa for example, through using some CSS positioning, and adding a border, and changing a background, we can create the same text box as commonly found in visual novels. As you see right down here, we have the bottom third text box and a two-thirds background right here, which is just white. And we also see that we can click anywhere in here to transition. So we can also use a background of sorts too, through mixing in some JavaScript using the jQuery library and that's already built into Twine. What if we wanted choices? Do we want choices? Or maybe we don't care about choices. Let's start saying we want choices. And we're sent to another passage. Of course, we always want choices. <laughs> And if we reload, maybe we don't want choices. Nah. <laughs> Who needs choices, right? So let's come back and look at the code here. So my start passage is pretty normal. It's got some text and it's got a link to another passage, scene one. Scene one, however, is where things get a little bit complicated. I'm using a number of different advanced techniques within Twine using the Harlow story format. It's got a number of different things going on here. The first of which is I'm setting the name tag passage to be this entire value, these nested divs here, these nested HTML elements. And we see we have a container that's open and closes at the bottom, so everything is within a container. And we see it has a top background and it has a text bubble. And the text bubble is the one that had the text content, the, for example, blah, 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 novels. And so these entire value from the start of this quotation to the end is set to the name tag passage. And they were also using the click macro and saying, act on the name tag. Whatever the name tag is associated with, listen for the click. And if someone clicks, then do something. And our do something is right here in this hook is to use the macro go to to go to scene two. However, at the very bottom here, we're associating the name tag passage. See if I click on it, Twine helpfully points it out everywhere I'm using it, to this empty hook. So up here we're saying set the name tag to be this entire value. And this name tag is set to this hook. So it uses this entire value as the content of this hook. And it's also listening for a click on that entire content. And if we click, it sends us to scene two. So I'll show you that here using the debug. And notice we can actually click anywhere because we're le actually listening for the click on this entire content, which is using CSS to position as I'll go over in just a moment. So we can click up here and the same thing happens. Do a reload. And we can click down here, just like in a visual novel, anywhere there's a click, it transition, transitions us to the next scene. Let's close that now. Now let's look at the CSS. That's where a lot of different things are happening. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm hiding the sidebar. And Harlow, the sidebar is also very, it's often very helpful to undo and redo certain things, certain actions. I don't particularly care about the sidebar in this story, so I'm going to go ahead and use CSS to hide it completely, to display none. And then I'm going to style a container. Now as you saw before, I had a container and then elements within that container. So I'm using the container here with a fixed position of the top left, and then it's got the full width and height of the screen, 100% and 100%. And then for text bubble, I'm recreating sort of the classic RenPy look. RenPy is a visual novel engine, or a library, or framework, or even workflow, depending on how you want to look at it, that has either directly inspired or things have been built in it you, over the last few years. RenPy is sort of the, the standard of how you create visual novels for most visual novels you will play. 
So I'm recreating that look. So it's got a bottom third of 30%. And we have a fixed position at the bottom left and then a background color and a border. So it looks like a text box at the bottom third of the window. Then we're styling a background above that, the top background. So instead of being a, a fixed position at the bottom left, this is a fixed position at the top left. And again, it has a margin and it has a width and a height of 100%. And I'm also restyling all links to be black. Now the reason I'm doing this is because in visual novels, hyperlinks, even if they are in the visual novel, and often they aren't, aren't blue. And when you have the mouse over them, they shouldn't appear to be blue. So in this case, all possible links are being set to black. And you may have actually noticed that in the star passage. So let me debug that so we can look at it. So you may have noticed this link right here is black. And even when the mouse is over it, it's still black. But when I click on it, it's a link and it takes me to something different. But we also wanted this text down here as part of the text bubble to also be black. So it looked as if it was part of a visual novel, even when in reality, it's actually a hyperlink to another passage. So going back to the CSS, last two things that are going on are centered and question. Centered just centers things. It's just CSS to using a fixed position, center whatever the content is in the middle of the screen. And then question is just a small part of the same code that was part of the text bubble. So questions have the same background color and border as text bubble. So they all sort of look the same. So I pulled up scene one and gone through it. Let's look at scene two. Scene two is pretty much the same except for this extra script tag at the very bottom here. And this is where I said the JavaScript would start to come in. So you, this is using jQuery to look for all elements that have the class of top background. And within this passage, only a single element, this one right here I've highlighted, has the class of top background. So in which case it sets, using a CSS function, its background to be blue. And if we test it using the debug, we see it. This top background is blue. And it was created during the runtime when that code was run within that passage. As we saw when we run pass, or scene one, and the background changed to blue. Okay, so scene one and scene two are okay. Let's go to scene three, where it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's the same general idea again. So we're using the nested HTML elements, the nested divs. We have a container and top background. And this is to replicate in visual novels of a background being behind the question. So you always see some type of background there. And we're using centered to center everything that is set within this. So anything that's being displayed, any text that shows up, will be centered on the screen. And we're replicating that same general code ideas that we saw previously for the text bubbles that we're setting a name tag, and the name tag is associated with some hook, and we're using the click macro again. But in this case, we're also collapsing its white space using these brackets here. So we have question one, and then we have question two. And we're not notice that I've separated these, and the reason is, I mean, kind of obvious, if you think about it, is that when you click on one, you want to go to one thing, and when you click on the other, you want to go to a separate thing. So we're looking at the same idea of scene one and scene two, but now we've broken it up here. So we have a section of code that sends us to scene four and a section of code that sends us to scene five. And of course, when you run this or you use a similar construction, you can rename your passages. And then we're reusing the same idea that we just saw in scene two by using a script tag at the bottom to style top background to the CSS of a background of green this time. So let's run scene three so we can see that in action using the debug test. And we see a green background and we see a two centered elements styled with the class of question. So they have a background color and a background border that looks like the other text bubbles. And we see that they're centered and we see when we click on one, we go to four. 
and when we click on the other, we go to 5. So let's look at 4 and 5 here to finish out. 4 is a very similar construction to 1 and 2, but in this case, when we click, nothing really happens, and it's the same with 4, that when we click, nothing really happens. And so there we have a recreation of some of the basics of a visual novel, where we have text boxes at the bottom, we have a changing background as we go, using a little bit of JavaScript mixed in there, and we also have some choices, as we saw in scene three. And we can have as many choices as we, as we want, but we just have to have a different name tag for each one. And we can go to whatever scenes we want, or any other passage we want, using a similar construction here. And that covers a lot of what most visual novels do. Of course, we could also mix in variables if we wanted, like some visual novels have, and do statistics or combined with a lot of other things, as you could do in Twine anyway, to create very complex visual novels using this similar setup here of using passages at the bottom, text bubbles at the bottom third, or choices to send us to different places. And so there we have a recreation of well, the basics of a visual novel using existing functionality within Twine. Thanks for watching.